Louis I's failure in Naples and another onslaught of the Black Death forced him in 1351 to summon a Diet of the Realm. At the Diet, it became visible that Charles I Robert's system, which Louis inherited, created a new differentiation in the nobility between the provincial nobility, whose focus was primarily on their own hereditary estates, their families and local matters, and the court nobility, who were in direct service to the crown. And a good number of them made advancement at court via meritorious service to the crown. Most of those were minor members of noble families that left their familial and local confines to serve the crown. Unlike their relatives, they developed a different perspective of the world, thinking of the realm as a whole, rather than just their particular local and familial interests. The provincial nobility were afraid that those with closer contact with the crown gained more favor and benefits from the crown, which was happening in a way. Not to mention that there was a social stigma surrounding family members that went to serve at court. As the less prominent could now rise independently of the family through service to the crown, they were viewed by some of their provincial relatives as traitors to the family, the local interest, and the old rights of the nobility which they wanted to protect from perceived encroachments of royal power. So at the Diet, to alleviate discontent, Louis declared the equality of all the nobility under the crown and reaffirmed all their rights in the realm. He was also forced to reaffirm the Bull of 1222, almost in its entirety. We accept, approve and confirm the above-mentioned letter of the Lord King Andrew II, our dearest ancestor and predecessor validated by his golden bull, untouched by any doubt, and transcribed word for word, inserted in this charter, with all the liberties contained in it, with the sole exception of the one paragraph to be excluded from this privilege, namely that contrary to the clause according to which noble men dying without heirs should be able and allowed in life and death to give, grant, sell, or alienate their estates to churches or to others whom they wish. They should in fact have no right at all to do so, but the property of the same nobles should descend to brothers, collateral relatives, and clansmen by right and according to law, pure and simple, without anyone's objection. Land was confirmed to be considered property of the nobility, but nobles could no longer freely dispose of their property. Property was forced to be given to male relatives, and when an entire male line of a landed noble family went extinct, the land would revert to the crown. At a diet, there was also discussion regarding the peasantry, especially with regards to the free-moving peasantry, the peasants who, unlike serfs, were not tied to the land. Although there exists a very complicated and wide variety of peasantry between the two ideals, depending on time and place and a bunch of local factors. The decision regarding the peasantry were made with an assumption of how things should work, and that is that the owner of the land came to an agreement with the peasants and gave them plots of land to work and live on for a set amount of time. In return for the land they used, the peasants owed labor at the landowner's personal land, they also owed taxes in produce or in cash to the landowner, the church and the crown. But this ideal ran into problems. One possible reason why an interest in the peasantry was taken at all was because of the Black Death, which suddenly caused severe shortages of labor in certain areas. Subsequent outbreaks would continue to do the same. Because of the shortage of labor on their lands, landowners started to make sure to gain more workers by swaying peasants from other people's land to come to theirs, through apparently giving them more favorable terms. Important to this, at the Diet, the judicial rights of the nobility over the peasantry on their land 
were expanded. This effectively meant that in the oncoming decades, centuries, the landowners started to apply more and more pressure, slowly stripping so-called freedoms away from their peasants, tying the peasant families to the lands they worked on in perpetuity, effectively turning them more and more into serfs over the course of several generations. The decisions of the Diet likely appeased the discontent and secured Louis' position among the nobility in the realm. Other diets that were to follow in other parts of the realm, for example in the kingdoms of Slavonia, Dalmatia and Croatia, were presided over by the king's brother Stephen, Duke of Slavonia, Dalmatia and Croatia, were called with the purpose of securing loyalty to the dynasty in those areas. But there was another part of society that Louis and his predecessors relied on for support. The developing and growing urban areas, fortified towns, mining towns, market towns. It was in the interest of the crown to keep those places out of unreliable hands. So Charles I Robert and Louis vastly increased the number of privileged towns by granting them special rights and putting them under direct authority of the crown. The most prestigious status was that of a free royal city. With his realm secure, Louis could again consider other matters. 